Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Satya Krishnamurthy. I'm a TPM on WhatsApp. Uh, I've been with WhatsApp now for uh, two years and two plus years. And um, I've had uh, uh, quite a number of product uh, product and feature launches in, 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 my, uh, in my career at WhatsApp. Um, and I wanted to share some of the learnings on things that could affect your product lifecycle with specific uh, focus on privacy, integrity, security, and data. Agenda. Um, here are some of the. Uh, here is the uh, flow of how I'm going to walk through um, uh, the some of the uh, some of my learnings, and uh, in the end, I'll, I will share uh, some of the key takeaways I want I want you guys to take away uh, take away as a part of this uh, learning. Um, this is your typical product life cycle. You start with an idea, uh, you build a POC, you do some user research, uh, you have a critical, uh, you define success metrics for the idea. Then um, once the idea gets flagged uh, or approved, um, you basically uh, go, go into a design cycle, you work on PRDs, you work on uh, building your design, um, as well as uh, work with the uh, tech lead on building the technical specs. Um, and once that uh, part of uh, aspect is completed, then you go into a full development mode. Um, in an agile environment, a lot of this becomes uh, in a um, 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 hybrid mode where design and develop happens in parallel. Um, and finally, you do have a test and validation, and you come up with a clearly uh, a, a, a comprehensive launch plan, um, identifying your target customers, identifying the countries where you want to uh, start off. Um, and then um, um, you do a slow rollout. While you're doing a slow rollout, of course, you're doing measurement and making sure that there are no regressions in anything, uh, any of the uh, key success metrics that you have identified, um, as well as uh, identify ways to improve for the follow up feature or the version two of your uh, feature. Now, this is your typical product design lifecycle. Everybody is familiar with this, but there, we are missing a few critical elements as a part of this uh, um, product lifecycle. Now, as product managers and TPMs and engineering managers, one of the key things that we are trying to do is um, with this product life cycle, we are trying to estimate when do you think we can potentially land this particular feature? When do you think I can uh, successfully release this feature? What will be the timeline? Um, because you need to inform your product marketing team, you need to inform the uh, 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 corporate marketing team, you need to inform the uh, PR team. There's a whole lot of folks who need to be, um, you need to align. And as a part of that process, you need to understand um, when when the release is going to happen, when the rollout is going to happen, so that all of the other other uh, um, cross-functional teams that you are uh, working with, they can also um, synchronize their watches with your release cycle. But as I said, you are missing a few critical elements. Now, what are these few critical elements? Now, privacy. If your product is a consumer product, um, or or even if you are enabling businesses to reach reach end consumers, which is a B two B to C, um, there are privacy misses that you need to be uh, uh, we need to be uh, aware of. And some of some of the recent um, I'm going to share uh, as a part of the next few misses some news articles that that are relevant that basically talks about some of these privacy misses that that we have gone through um, that uh, several applications have gone through uh, and they have been reported in the news about uh, some of these privacy misses right uh, and these privacy misses uh, essentially can um, uh, have an impact on your on your life cycle because you need to go back pull the feature down and then make sure that you implement your privacy uh, privacy uh, misses data misses um, whether um, you are basically uh, uh, the type of data logging that you do, the type of uh, data that you collect and making sure that the data ha has uh, protections and controls um, and making sure that you're not collecting unwanted data, all of that ha are relevant here. And uh, as you design your feature and as you design go through the success metrics, you wanna make sure that relevant data is collected so that A, you can validate the feature at the same time, you're also not over collecting or, or um, or uh, breaking some of the user uh, uh, user privacy promises that you have made. Integrity. Now, the features that you developed, uh, you want to make sure that um, you are not uh, you are not making this uh, making this a bad experience or an unfavorable experience for your users. You want to make sure that the users feel comfortable using this feature. Um, uh, your consumers feel uh, uh, comfortable using this feature, and this is not going to cause um, any unwanted. Um, any kind of unwanted uh, uh, um, impact. Uh, you do want to have tighter integrity controls on how this feature, how whatever feature that you're building is being used. And integrity is going to play a key role 
in making sure ensuring that um, you are uh, you are able to uh, you are able to accomplish that. Um, security, uh, the data that you've collected, the integrity controls, and the security controls that uh, the the controls that you have put in place, you cannot breach them. The data cannot it should not be accessible by anybody. Even uh, within the organization, you want to have tighter controls. Um, even within within the teams, if it is a sensitive data, you want to have uh, you want to have um, uh, st st stronger controls. Um, but some of these security misses can have a significant um, uh, penalties and impact uh, on your feature lifecycle, on your on your on the feature and the and how you're going to measure the success of this feature. Finally, policy. Uh, policy is uh, is getting more and more complicated because each and every country has its own policy team. Um, they have their own set of uh, requirements that they are working through, uh, and um, um, so which means if you are if you are building a global application then you need to be cognizant of um, what each and every country policy is stating, which country has what type of regulation that is currently um, 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 uh, currently ongoing, um, where what type of um, um, uh, what type of um, uh, event that is happening in this country that could potentially uh, impact your product or feature release. Um, we will discuss some of these things in detail, but this missing this could uh, or not having having a vision uh, visibility into some of these global events could potentially impact your product uh, product release and product launch and finally costs of some of these things are not just uh, your feature getting delayed or you have to roll back your feature or 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 uh, you are going to have a uh, um, you're going to have uh, some um, challenges in uh, in uh, measuring successfully um, it also has uh, fines a lot of the a lot of the a lot of the policy uh, policies and the uh, the policy teams that across multiple countries uh, be it the uh, uh, brazilian um, brazil or uh, mexico or um, uh, european union um, india uh, they all have very strict uh, strict uh, privacy violation fines and any of these privacy violation fines could basically result in uh, either users uh, filing a class action or um, uh, countries, basically countries and uh, um, and uh, countries and their uh, policy teams, basically coming back with uh, fines, which could potentially impact um, not just your feature, but but overall credibility of the product. So overall, as you are thinking through thinking about your features, there are some new personas that you need to be user personas that you need to be thinking about, which needs to be added to the product lifecycle. You need to you need to figure out. Okay, I'm I'm thinking about this user feature. What is the privacy going to? What is the privacy uh, aspect of this feature? It's going to be. Um, does it meet the uh, meet the product and corporate policies that has been established? What is the legal team is going to talk about? Uh, um, 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 uh, what is the legal team's view about the product and the feature and the commitments that we are um, that, that we are making? Um, what type of access controls uh, are, are are established uh, when when we create and log some of the uh, new data? And how am I deleting the uh, deleting some of the unused or old data, or how am I making sure that I'm uh, I'm having a policy around delete, const constantly deleting older data? Um, integrity, making sure that there is customer trust and customer value in the product, and making and that that persona is also something that you need to be thinking about um, as you are as you are building this feature and security. Ensuring that um, the the data and the application, the user security are very well understood, and there are controls in place so that um, you are actually building um, your system and your feature with security in your mind. Uh, and finally, policy. Um, it's not just about you're thinking about uh, how you're launching the uh, launching the feature, but you're also thinking about what are the global events that are happening. What are the global policies about your feature um, that that uh, that you need to be cognizant about? And how is it going to impact your product release? Um, and how how are the, how it is going to impact your overall uh, schedule? Is something that uh, you need to be um, you need to be planning for as a part of your uh, product lifecycle. Uh, digging deeper, there are a few things that you want to be a uh, um, uh, few things that you want to be uh, cognizant about when you are dealing with uh, privacy principles, as well as uh, data collection. Um, and these are again. Um, these are. Uh, I'm. 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 I'm going to go uh, quote a GDPR, which is uh, one of the one of the standards in how uh, how uh, what are the generally accepted privacy principles are. Um, in terms of uh, these privacy principles, the key things that that you want to think about uh, as you are building it is: Am I having a checkbox of um, a checkbox of a checkbox which basically identified every line item here is essentially. Um, 
uh, is fully vetted as I build my uh, build my product, build my feature set, uh, and build this logging and success metrics that are tied to these feature set. Um, and um, and and having having that kind of a checklist, having that kind of a, um, ha, um, 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 some 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 kind of a, um, uh, uh, awareness around your product and your feature is going to basically make your product lifecycle much simpler. Now, in terms of data collection and flow, it is uh, it is also not just uh, your feature lifecycle that you need to be thinking about. You need to also understand the data lifecycle. Um, the reason uh, reason is essentially as as you start collecting, um, be it an application that you have built um, that is there in the app store, or, or be it uh, an API driven um, 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 uh, platform that you're building, the data that you collect as a part of that process um, essentially goes through uh, 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 its own uh, life cycle. It basically gets collected, it gets stored in a particular system, it gets analyzed, and then um, a certain recommendations are built based on that data. Um, but then that data becomes stale. What happens to that data? How, how are we controlling it? As well as um, what type of uh, risks and mitigations that uh, that needs to be implemented prior to shipping these features uh, that are tied to this data. As well, um, you need to basically making sure that um, how this data flows between these systems. Uh, is this data highly sensitive data? Can everybody access uh, access this data or should everybody access this data? If not, Am I making sure that there are controls in my process, in my systems to ensure that, enforce that um, these uh, there are mitigations that are in place so that the data flows are um, tightly monitored and controlled. And protection and deletion, again, it's gonna be another important critical aspect. Uh, you need to understand why this data is getting logged. As a, as a product manager or a TPM um, or, or an engineering manager, understanding why this data is getting logged and what type of personally identifiable information about the user or about a business that is being collected. And you need to have a clear explanation and accountability on, uh, which again goes back to the principles I was talking to you about, um, accountability on why this, da uh, why this data was collected. Uh, and uh, in, for certain countries, uh, you need to be uh, clearly explaining why you are logging this. Um, and because it, it is tied to their uh, um, uh, country policy on, uh, on uh, basically having a tighter controls around user data. And then having the right set of access control. We talked about this. So um, as the data flows through your system at every single touch point, you have to make sure that nobody can uh, access this data, be it uh, a security breach. Uh, or, or be it, um, be it even internal users who are not authorized to um, access some of the sensitive data cannot get access to it. And finally, data deletion policies um, are are of course needed. The reason um, I emphasize on data deletion is that certain data deletion uh, principles need to be in place to make sure that um, older data cannot be misused. Uh, misused, and we talk. We'll talk about this um, in in future slides. Um, integrity. Now, integrity processes, um, uh, again, we talked about uh, making sure that app and your feature experience are not a uh, feature experience are not uh, turning out to be a nightmare or come, uh, are throwing a bad experience for, for your users. Um, and having an, uh, having an integrity team, which basically ensures that there is a customer trust in product and features. And that is, and we are not uh, compromising it, compromising the customer tr trust for uh, for uh, for a variety of a particular feature, or or just making sure that uh, uh, or um, or access of a particular feature is going to be absolutely critical. Um, we talked about some. Uh, we we saw some of the examples of um, uh, where where uh, what are the types of customer trust misuse of misuse of product or feature for personal gains. All of this is going to be very critical when you are dealing and working with the integrity team and as you are building some of the controls within within some of the uh, uh, within within your product and feature uh, you will be asked or you'll you will be required to build in some of these additional controls so that any compromise um, in your product or feature uh, can be addressed quickly um some of the other personas that you might want to think about a uh, commerce policy now for products that uh, that are focused on trading of goods and services, um, it is going to be almost critical to work with uh, with your sanctions team, making sure that um, uh, only allowed products and services to be sold in platform. Certain countries do not uh, permit a uh, certain type of uh, products and services to be sold. Um, certain uh, certain countries expect um, uh, um, uh, certain uh, we, the trade with some other countries that are banned in their uh, in the in the list. 
um, to to ha not have access to uh, access to some of the products and services, and making sure that the look uh, not not only uh, allow having a generally allowed list of product and services, but also making sure that complying with the commerce policies of the countries where you plan to roll out your feed product and feature is going to be absolutely important as a part of your uh, um, understanding and working with the commerce commerce and sanctions team. For products, we talked about um, user-facing products, and there is also, the, uh, we uh, briefly mentioned the platform or the API-based products. Now, API uh, for products and features that provide API access for, uh, for customers and partners um, to uh, either internal data or internal features, again, going through uh, some level of uh, controls uh, is going to be absolutely critical. Um, unauthorized access of the API, making sure that um, 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 businesses and users who are accessing the API are complying with the organization policies as well as the local government mandates. I also, if you if a businesses are accessing some of the consumer data through API, um, then there is a tighter control, stricter control on how the access is provided, how the data is shared, and how uh, how um, the business uh, how you are able to control the data flow, not just the data flow from your system, but also how the data gets used in the uh, end system is also, uh, end, uh, end um, uh, systems are also going to be absolutely critical. So having an end-to-end -end understanding of um, not just the API part, but having the data flow from your system to the uh, party that is accessing the data is going to be critical. Finally, um, as we talked about various controls, various checklists, various uh, uh, policies and personas, um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be very important to think about how this implementation is happening. Um, um, you might have identified all of this in the in your specs. You have identified um, 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 a whole lot of uh, the uh, ident identified and documented all these personas. Um, but um, a simple miss or a bug that uh, can creep in uh, into your coding. Um, could potentially derail your whole feature and functionality that could break some of the privacy, uh, integrity, security, and data principles that you have established as a part of your feature development. Um, so having a compliance uh, having a compliance check and making sure the implementation review is happening whenever you are dealing with sensitive data or a sensitive feature is going to be absolutely important. Um, and uh, some in some cases, having having evidence, uh, evidence and submission of evidence is going uh, that ensures that all the safeguards are in place um, uh, before you can even have one external user access to this feature um, would be something that might be absolutely needed. Um, in some cases, it might be enforced saying that without the evidence, you cannot launch, or, or um, in some cases, you might be asked uh, to provide evidence at the later stage as the product starts rolling up. So things to remember. Um, data access is um, uh, data access uh, again. Uh, it's going to be absolutely critical for you to have um, uh, have permissions and the right set of permissions before you uh, 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 before you launch a feature. Uh, the changes that you make, uh, be it feature changes and the products uh, changes that that you that you're going to make. Um, say you have released a version one of the product. Now you're thinking about version two of the feature. Um, you cannot you cannot change the data permissions or data policies um, just because your uh, feature is getting upgraded. If you are building new use cases or new features or enhancements, they will require definitely require new permissions or revisiting some of the old permissions and going through that whole process all over again. Um, no overarching guidelines that that you have established in your feature can be violated or you have to ensure that it will not be violated by any other feature or future releases. So today's guidelines uh, cannot be broken just because uh, we are coming up with a new feature. So which means um, as you're building today's feature, you should also be thinking about all the uh, decisions that have been taken in the past to ensure that you're not just adhering to today's decisions, but also all the past decisions that are past decisions and past policies that have been enforced. Um, as I said, um, the, the, uh, as, as we are building more and more of these consumer apps, trying to reach, uh, reach uh, uh, build some innovative features, the product, uh, product life cycle is definitely getting complicated as we need to think about all these, um, all these uh, critical elements or critical aspects of um, your, uh, your product, uh, product, product launch life cycle. Uh, finally, you would have done all of this. You would have gone through a variety of uh, variety of uh, uh, checks and balances. Make sure that you've gone through uh, uh, commitments. You've gone through um, uh, implementations. You've gone through uh, data checks, data controls. Everything has been done. But even all of this, there are certain things that could impact your pro product or program release. 
um, these these are what I would like to call as uh, unknown unknowns, right? Now, um, local elections could definitely impact some of the feature releases because certain governments would say, you know, don't release this feature because this could potentially ha- uh, cause some 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 kind of a, um, some kind of a, a controversy uh, due to these local elections, or there are some disinformation situation. There is a natural disaster um, that could potentially prevent you from uh, launching a new feature because uh, either it could cause disinformation or it could potentially impact the users from uh, getting access to uh, access to some of the critical services that that your uh, that your products and services are offering. So um, I, again, be cognizant of unknown unknowns because um, that uh, that again could potentially come back. And even after doing all of these uh, um, uh, privacy, uh, security, integrity, and data checks um, and policy checks, you could you could still have impact your product uh, product launch. Um, uh, things that I think uh, there's one more thing that could disrupt your product launch, and having that cognizance uh, is going to be very critical. Finally, uh, I do want to leave leave you guys with what is a modified product design lifecycle going to be? Privacy is going to be every uh, is going to touch every single aspect of um, your uh, product uh, product design lifecycle. So having a constant touch uh, touch point on privacy and privacy principles is going to be critical. Integrity is again. Uh, um, uh, going to be important as you design and develop the features, making sure that um, the user experience uh, is uh, is not um, is not um, uh, compromised in any way, um, and uh, users are not impacted in any way. It's going to be very, very important to understand data and data controls um, uh, as as you design, as you develop, and start logging, uh, collecting, uh, thinking about collecting data and putting in controls. Data is going to add additional um, impact. Security as you build your feature. Uh, security is going to play a key role, making sure that all the features, uh, features and uh, feature sets uh, comply with the security policies. There is no uh, data breach that can happen. There is no access breach. Application user sec- uh, data is all secure and it is fully under lock and key. And finally, policy and having a clear idea on policy and uh, um, uh, imp- things that could impact uh, impact your launch. Uh, uh, you are constantly in touch with the policy teams or constantly in touch with uh, teams that are working with the local governments to make sure that um, your product launch in that particular country is not going to uh, is not going to have any impact. And finally, the red line is your implementation review, making sure that um, whatever all, all said and done, uh, all validated, your your code does not have critical bugs that could potentially breach some of the product. Uh, uh, privacy, integrity, data, and security principles that you have established. Um, that is going to be something uh, absolutely critical to make sure that um, all, um, um, all whatever we are, we ha- you have established as a spec is something that uh, is what actually gets implemented and uh, before before the rollout happens. Um, finally, key takeaways: um, privacy, security. As you guys are thinking about product features, uh, consumer-facing product features, or API uh, uh, API-based features. Um, privacy, security, integrity, and data should encompass um, all the aspects of uh, product uh, product um, development lifecycle. Um, definitely do understand the impact of timelines and, and penalties when ignoring these, uh, these challenges because um, um, any estimation that you make uh, will be meaningless without taking into consideration some of these uh, critical um, uh, items that could potentially um, impact the timelines um, and could uh, could also cause some rollback or, in some cases, penalties. Watch out for current events and policy changes. Uh, um, if you're thinking about a global uh, global uh, product or a global feature, definitely watch out for current events, policy changes, because they could again come back to um, come back to impact your uh, uh, timelines. Uh, thank you. And uh, uh, and uh, are there any questions or uh, questions that I can answer?